Hello everybody, welcome to another edition of Friday Night Scripture Reading. Uh, we've been working our way through Genesis and the ladies just started a Genesis class on Wednesday night last week. So ladies, if you'd like to join them, it's Wednesdays at 6 o'clock and Pastor Dave's been teaching through John. He started that a week or so ago on uh, Wednesday nights as well, six o'clock, Bass Chapel. But we'll go ahead and get started reading out of the LSB as we've been since we started Genesis, the LSB chapter 40 of Genesis. Now it happened that after these things, the cupbearer and the baker for the king of Egypt offended the Lord and king of Egypt. And Pharaoh was furious with his two officials, the chief cupbearer and the chief baker. So he put them in confinement in the house of the captain of the bodyguard in the jail, the same place where Joseph was imprisoned. And the captain of the bodyguard appointed Joseph as overseer over them. And he attended to them, and they were in confinement for some time. Then the cupbearer and the baker for the king of Egypt, who were confined in jail, both had a dream the same night each man with his own dream and each man with its own interpretation. Now Joseph came to them in the morning and saw them, and behold, they were dejected. So he asked Pharaoh's officials who were with him in confinement in his master's house, saying, Why are your faces so sad today? Then they said to him, We have had a dream, and there is no one to interpret it. Then Joseph said to them, Do not interpretations belong to God? Recount it to me, please. So the chief cupbearer recounted his dream to Joseph and said to him, In my dream, behold, there was a vine in front of me. And on the vine were three branches, and as it was budding into blossom, in, as it was budding, its blossoms came out, and its clusters produced ripe grapes. Now Pharaoh's cup was in my hand, so I took the grapes and squeezed them into Pharaoh's cup, and I put the cup into Pharaoh's hand. Then Joseph said to him, This is the interpretation of it. The three branches are three days. Within three more days, Pharaoh will lift up your head and restore you to your office. And you will put Pharaoh's cup into his hand according to your former custom when you were his cupbearer. Only remember me when it goes well with you. And please show me loving kindness by remembering me to Pharaoh and getting me out of this house. For I was in fact stolen from the land of the Hebrews, and even here I have done nothing that they should have put me into this pit. And the chief baker saw that he had interpreted favorably. So he said to Joseph, I also saw in my dream, and behold, there were three baskets of white bread on my head. And in the top basket there were some of all sorts of baked food for Pharaoh. And the birds were eating them out of the basket on my head. Then Joseph answered and said, This is its interpretation. The three baskets are three days. Within three more days, Pharaoh will lift up your head off of you and will hang you on a tree, and the birds will eat your flesh off of you. Thus it happened on the third day, which was Pharaoh's birthday, that he made a feast for all his servants, and he lifted up the head of the chief cupbearer and the head of the chief baker among his servants, and he restored the chief cupbearer to his office, and he put the cup in Pharaoh's hand. But he hanged the chief baker, just as Joseph had interpreted to them. Yet the chief cupbearer did not remember Joseph, but forgot him. Genesis chapter 41. Now it happened at the end of two full years that Pharaoh had a dream, and behold, he was standing by the Nile. And behold... From the Nile there came up seven cows, sleek and fat, and they grazed in the reeds. Then, behold, seven other cows came up after them from the Nile, ugly and thin, and they stood by the other cows on the bank of the Nile, and the ugly and thin cows ate up the seven sleek and fat cows. Then Pharaoh awoke. He again fell asleep and dreamed a second time, and, behold, seven ears of grain came up on a single stalk, plump and good. And behold, seven ears, thin and scorched by the east wind, sprouted up after them. And the thin ears swallowed up the seven plump and full ears. Then Pharaoh awoke, and behold, it was a dream. Now it happened that in the morning his spirit was troubled, so he sent and called for all the magicians of Egypt 
and all its wise men and Pharaoh recounted to them his dream. But there was no one who could interpret it, interpret them to Pharaoh. Then the chief cupbearer spoke to Pharaoh, saying, I would bring to remembrance today my own offenses. Pharaoh was furious with his servants, and he put me in confinement in the house of the captain of the bodyguard, both me and the chief baker. And we had a dream on the same night, he and I. Each of us dreamed according to the interpretation of his own dream. Now there was with us a Hebrew youth, a slave of the captain of the bodyguard, and we recounted them to him, and his, and he interpreted our dreams to us. To each one he interpreted according to his own dream. And just as he interpreted for us, so it happened. He restored me in my office, but he hanged him. Then Pharaoh sent and called for Joseph, and they rushed him out of the pit, and he shaved himself and changed his clothes, and he came to Pharaoh. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, I have had a dream, but no one can interpret it. Yet I have heard it said about you that you hear a dream and that you can interpret it. Joseph then answered Pharaoh, saying, It is not in me. God will answer concerning the welfare of Pharaoh. So <clears throat> Pharaoh spoke to Joseph. In my dream, behold, I was standing on the bank of the Nile, and behold, seven cows, fat and sleek, came up out of the Nile, and they grazed in the reeds. And behold, seven other cows came up after them, poor and very ugly and lean, such as I had never seen in all the land of Egypt in regard to ugliness. And the lean and ugly cows ate up the first seven fat cows, but they devoted them, or but they devoured them, and yet it could not be known that they had devoured them, for they were just as ugly as before. Then I awoke. Then I saw also in my dream, and behold, seven ears, full and good, came up on a single stalk, and behold, seven ears, withered, thin, and scorched by the east wind, sprouted up after them. And the thin ears swallowed the seven good ears. So I told it to the magicians, but there was no one who could declare it to me. Then Joseph said to Pharaoh, Pharaoh's dreams are one and the same. God has declared to Pharaoh what he is about to do. The seven good cows are seven years, and the seven good ears are seven years. The dreams are one and the same. And the seven lean and ugly cows that came up after them are seven years. And the seven lean ears scorched by the east wind will be seven years of famine. It is as I have spoken to Pharaoh. God has shown to Pharaoh what he is about to do. Behold, seven years of great abundance are coming in all the land of Egypt. And after them, seven years of famine will arise. And all the abundance will be forgotten in the land of Egypt. And the famine will ravage the land so that the abundance will be unknown to the, in the land because of that subsequent famine, for it will be very heavy. Now as for a repeating of the dream to Pharaoh twice, it means the matter is confirmed by God, and God will quickly bring it about. So now let Pharaoh look for a man understanding and wise and set him over the land of Egypt. Let Pharaoh take action and appoint overseers over the land, and let him exact a fifth of the produce of the land of Egypt in the seven years of abundance. Then let them gather all the food of these good years that are coming, and let them store up the grain for food in the cities under Pharaoh's authority, and let them keep watch over it. And let the food be appointed for the land for the seven years of famine, which will happen in the land of Egypt, so that the land will not be cut off during the famine. And the proposal seemed good to Pharaoh and to all his servants. Then Pharaoh said to his servants, Can we find a man like this in whom is a divine spirit? So Pharaoh said to Joseph, Since God has made you, known, made you know all of this, there is no one so understanding and wise as you are. You shall be over my house, and according to your command all my people shall do homage. Only in the throne I will be greater than you. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, See, I have set you over all the land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh removed his signet ring from his hand and put it on Joseph's hand and clothed him in garments of fine linen and put the gold necklace around his neck. And he had him ride in the second chariot and they called out before him, Bow the knee, and he set him over all the land of Egypt. Moreover, Pharaoh said to Joseph, Though I am Pharaoh, yet without your permission, no one shall raise his hand 
or foot in all the land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh named Joseph Zephanath Paniah, and he gave him Asenath, the daughter of Potiphar, priest of On, as a wife. And Joseph went forth over the land of Egypt. Now Joseph was thirty years old when he stood before Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And Joseph went out from the presence of Pharaoh and passed through all the land of Egypt. <coughs> and, and during the seven years of plenty, the land brought forth abundantly. So he gathered all the food of these seven years which happened in the land of Egypt and placed the food in the cities. He placed in every city the food from its own surrounding fields. Thus Joseph stored up grain in great abundance, like the sand of the sea, until he stopped measuring it. For it was beyond measure. Now, before the year of famine came, two sons were born to Joseph, whom Asenath, the daughter of Potiphar, a priest of On, bore to him. And Joseph named the firstborn Manasseh, for he said, God has made me forget all my trouble and all my father's household. And he named the second Ephraim, for he said, God has made me fruitful in the land of my affliction. Then the seven years of plenty which had been in the land of Egypt came to an end, and the seven years of famine began to come, just as Joseph had said. So there was famine in, the land, in all the lands, but in all the land of Egypt there was bread. Then, as to the land of Egypt, as the la then all the land of Egypt was famished, and the people cried out to Pharaoh for bread. And Pharaoh said to all the Egyptians, "Go to Joseph; whatever he says to you, you shall do." Now the famine was over all the face of the land, and Joseph opened all the storehouses and sold to the Egyptians, and the famine was severe in the land of Egypt. Now all the earth also came to Egypt to buy grain from Joseph, because the famine was severe in all the earth. Genesis chapter 42. Now Jacob saw there was grain in Egypt, and Jacob said to his sons, Why are you staring at one another? Then he said, Behold, I have heard that there is grain in Egypt. Go down there and buy some for us from there, so that we may live and not die. So ten brothers of Joseph went down to buy grain from Egypt. But Jacob did not send Joseph's brother Benjamin with his brothers, for he said, Lest any harm befall him. So the sons of Israel came to buy grain among those who were coming, for the famine was in the land of Canaan also. Now Joseph was the one in power over the land. He was the one who sold to all the people of the land. And Joseph's brothers came and bowed down to him with their faces to the ground. And Joseph saw his brothers and recognized them. But he disguised himself to them and spoke to them harshly. And he said to them, Where have you come from? And they said, From the land of Canaan to buy food. But Joseph recognized his brothers, although they did not recognize him. And Joseph remembered the dreams which he had about them and said to them, You are spies. You have come down or you have come to look at the nakedness of the land. Then they said to him, No, my lord, but your servants have come to buy food. We all are sons of one man. We are honest men. Your servants are not spies. And he said to them, No, but you have come to look at the nakedness of our land. So they said, Your servants are twelve brothers in all the sons of one man in the land of Canaan, and behold, the youngest is with our father today, and one is no more. And Joseph said to them, It is as I said to you, you are spies. By this you will be tested. By the life of Pharaoh you shall not go from this place unless your youngest brother comes here. Send one of you that he may get your brother while you remain confined, that your words may be tested, whether there is truth in you but if not, by the life of Pharaoh, surely you are spies. Then he put them all together in prison for three days. And Joseph said to them on the third day, Do this and live, for I fear God. If you are honest men, let one of your brothers be confined to your in your prison. But as for the rest of you, go, bring grain for the famine of your households, and bring your youngest brother to me so your words may be proven true, and you will not die. And they did so. Then they said to one another, Surely we are guilty concerning our brother, because we saw the distress of his soul when he begged us. 
<coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> when he begged us, yet we would not listen. Therefore this distress has come upon us. And Reuben answered them, saying, Did I not tell you, saying, Do not sin against the boy? Yet you would not listen, so also his blood, behold, it is required of us. Now they did not know that Joseph was listening, for there was an interpreter between them. And he turned away from them and wept. Then he returned to them and spoke to them, and he took Simeon from them and bound him before their eyes. Then Joseph gave a command to fill their bags with grain and to restore every man's money in his sack and to give them provisions for the journey. And thus it was done for them. So they loaded their donkeys with their grain and went from there. Then one of them opened his sack to give his donkey fodder at the lodging place. And he saw his money and behold, it was in the mouth of his sack. So he said to his brothers, my money has been returned and behold, it is even in my sack. And their hearts sank, and they turned trembling to one another, saying, What is this that God has done to us? And then they came to their father Jacob in the land of Canaan, and told him all that had happened to them, saying, The man, the Lord of the land, spoke harshly with us, and took us for spies of the country. So we said to him, We are honest men, we are not spies. We are twelve brothers, sons of our father. One is no more. And the youngest is with our father today in the land of Canaan. Then the man, the lord of the land, said to us, By this, I will know that you are honest men. Leave one of your brothers with me, and take grain for the famine of your households, and go. But bring your youngest brother to me, that I may know that you are not spies, but honest men. <clears throat> I will give your brother to you, and you may trade in the land. Now it happened that they were emptying their sacks, and behold, every man's bundle of money was in his sack. And they and their father saw the bundles of money, and they feared. And their father Jacob said to them, You have bereaved me of my children. Joseph is no more, and Simeon is no more, and you would take Benjamin? All these things are against me. Then Reuben spoke to his father, saying, You may put my two sons to death if I do not bring him back to you. Put him in my hand, and I will return him to you. But Jacob said, My son shall not go down with you, for his brother is dead, and he alone remains. If harm should befall him on the journey on which you are going, then you will bring my gray hair down to Sheol in sorrow. I think we'll stop there. Um, if the Lord wills it, we'll see you Sunday morning. Corporate worship is at 11 a.m. Sunday school is at 10 a.m. Have a great weekend. Goodbye.